Welcome back to the Student Hub Live Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences Showcase. Well, this is a very exciting session. I know a lot of you are looking forward to it because we're going to be talking about the new BA Honours in Music and discussing uh, some of the new and exciting modules, A272 Music Sound and Technology. Um, and also we're going to tell you about the OU's really innovative collaboration with Trinity Lab and Conservatoire of Music and Dance. So whether or not you're interested in studying music, this session will be very, very enjoyable um, to learn about distance education and how innovative the Open University are more generally. So I'm going to be talking to Robert Samuels and also Ben Winters. Robert is the author of one of the new modules that we produce um, with another institution and Ben has also been uh, developing the degree qualification which we're going to talk about today. Now you'll see a widget or oh, an interactive voting tool on the screen and it says what is the sound. Now you're not going to be able to answer that until we play you the sound in a little bit although you're very welcome to vote and you can change your mind. You just select on the item that applies um, so you can choose footsteps in the snow, a dog eating a carrot or a nearly complete TMA, which is tutor marked assignment for those of you who don't know. Okay, so Ben, let's mm. talk about the degree overall. We've got a number of different modules um, and also we have a degree level and a certificate level as well. So I wonder if you can tell us um, how it all works. Well, it's, it's a really kind of exciting new degree for us because it offers students the opportunity to study music at degree level, um, even if they've had no prior experience of studying music at all, which is really something quite unique in, in the higher education environment. Um, so it works in much the way, same way as, as other arts and humanities qualifications in, in that they follow an interdisciplinary level one and then undertake um, two compulsory level two um, modules in music and two at level three. And at level two, this, uh, these two modules are A224 Inside Music, which is really a look at the nuts and bolts of music, how music works in terms of its harmony, its form, its texture. And A232, Music, Sounds and Technology, which is the, the new module where we're running for the first time this, um, this presentation. Um, and then at level three, there's um, a module called uh, Central Questions in the Study of Music, A342, which is really an introduction to how music works within its social and cultural contexts, asking questions about what music means um, and what sort of social work does it do. And then finally, there's this uh, collaborative module with Trinity Laban uh, Conservatory of Music and Dance, which allows students to really reflect on their own music making. Um, now, students don't need to be uh, particularly high-level performers or indeed have much experience at all as, as practical music makers, um, but they need to be performing with at least one other person um, in order to reflect on that. And that's really why I think this, this degree is really exciting for us, because it offers that chance for students who perhaps haven't um, been uh, studying music at all, um, who perhaps haven't even learned to play an instrument, to, to no, nonetheless do something and, and perhaps join a choir and, and learn to um, engage with other musicians and reflect on that music making practice. And besides that, there's, there's a, a huge amount of, um, we're quite um, proud about the, the, the amount of music that they study and the different types and the different varieties of music they encounter. So it's not just about studying Western classical music as, as some people might think, although music history is, is a large part of what they do. But students also engage with contemporary popular culture. Um, so they study everything from Bach, Mozart and Beethoven to, to Kate Bush, Radiohead and um, Elton John, you know. But they also engage with jazz, um, with the blues and with mus non-Western music as well, things like uh, music of sub-Saharan Africa. Mm. So they really get a, a, a really broad um, introduction to all types of, of different music from all kinds of different um, cultural backgrounds. And the way that they study it as well is, is not just a case of studying the notes or doing something with the notes, either creatively or analytically. Um, they, they sort of function as cultural historians in some ways. So they learn about um, how they learn to see a culture through its, the lens of its music. Um, they also learn to analyze how music works as sound. And in fact, that's part of what the new module A232 does. Students learn to analyze the sound of music. Um, and that really helps them to reflect on their own listening experiences as well. So it's this kind of combination of historical study, um, creative practice. Um, so as part of A232, they 
They learned to create a mobile phone ringtone, which is absolutely fantastic. Um, and in the A224, they write their own song. So there's a creative element to it. Um, and then there's an analytical element as, as well. So it really covers a, a huge range of things that, that people do in higher education music. That's so unique, I guess. I mean, perhaps even globally, because you're not just doing your theory, you're not just no. playing, you're also learning a lot about from the social sciences and, and you know from an arts perspective as well, how things are created and, and also how we look at those things, Absolutely. both in terms of different locations and time and space. Yes, I mean, you could say that, that all, all cultures have, have featured some kind of music. So you could even say that, um, you know, to be human um, involves making some kind of music. So music provides a really valuable way to learn something about people. You know, you're not just learning about the music itself in a kind of bubble. You're using that study to reveal something about culture more generally. Yeah. And that's why it's such a fascinating subject. Yeah, no, it's, it's amazing. In fact, somebody I'm talking to a bit later about um, environment and society is using sound to create um, an image, you know, of, of how people see a certain place, etc. Mm -hmm. So sound is very evocative, both in terms of the technical side of things and also what makes music. But the sound technology is, is really interesting and, and very, very unique. And this is the new module, isn't it, Bob? That's right. Yes, it goes live in October this year. Yeah. And uh, so we're finishing off writing it and, uh, and getting it ready now. So we're, we're very excited about, uh, uh, about seeing it uh, come to fruition. It's a very practical module. It's a module in which you get to do a lot of stuff with music. Um, uh, there, as Ben said, there's a broad range of things that you do across the whole degree. But uh, this module is one where you have to do um, quite a bit of studying and understanding, but the emphasis is on doing things with what, uh, with what, what you discover. Um, you make recordings, you uh, change the, the, the way the sounds, uh, uh, sounds um, are heard, um, you, you look at them uh, from the, from, uh, through the lens of, of, of technology uh, in order to understand the nature of sound itself. Now, Ben mentioned that um, a lot of people studying this qualification don't necessarily want to you know, be a musician or notary. There are a variety of sort of different motivations that people would have yeah. and that you don't have to necessarily want to be a performing yeah. artist um, or, or, or great cellist to be able to, to do one of these qualifications. Who is then interested in something like the sound technology module? Well, do you need to note read? Um, no, you don't. There's one of the, the, it's one of the modules um, in which you don't have to be able to read music in order to, to study it. Um, obviously, you can read music. That's a, a lovely skill. It's a, great, it's a very important transferable skill and so on and so forth. But this isn't one that we need you to do uh, in studying this. A lot of people get put off studying music because they think they have to learn the nuts and bolts and notation. Mm -hmm. Well, we do teach the nuts and bolts and notation, but not all of, uh, of our modules um, require them. Uh, this one does not, and the certificate um, that we do in collaboration with Trinity Laban doesn't either. We have quite a few um, musicians who don't read the notes in order to play, they, 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 they improvise, they play by ear, they write music down using other systems rather than traditional music notation. And in the music sound and technology module, you're looking at music as sound. It's there in the title. Uh, you know, so uh, the first thing you do is you use a computer-based piece of software to look at a piece of music, but look at it as just a sound trace. And you know, ask yourself, what can we find out about that? Uh, which goes beyond or is different from what you can see if you look at a musical score, a printed score. I'd like to just take a quick trip to the hot desk because people are talking and I'd like to hear what they're saying. And we have a new person, Kath, welcome <laughs> from the student support team. Um, so you're dealing with the chat as well this afternoon. Yeah, yeah. How is everyone at home? Everyone is good. There's a lot of biscuit talk going on. It is that time of day it though, Kath, and that, that is a common day. thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have got an interesting question. Um, I was trying to find the answer, but I didn't know. Apparently there's an OU module which can take the place of the ABRSM level 5 theory. Is that right? It depends exactly what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> and then something to do with your spare time? Uh, they talk or... <laughs> about, they talk about uh, associated ball grade theory, grade, grade 5 theory, which, which is a kind of, um, is a standard which some other universities need, require you to have as mm. the, the amount of music theory you know before you start. Um, now, we don't require you to have a particular level of theory before you start. We have freely available uh, materials on OpenLearn called yeah. an Introduction mm -hmm. to Music Theory, and that gets, it, it's not 
uh, meant to correlate with the Royal Schools of Music Associated Board qualification. But it gets you started on the understanding of music theory. It gets you up to the same kind of knowledge of the nuts and bolts of writing music, understanding how chords and melodies work, uh, that you do from that kind of uh, from that kind of qualification. And that goes up to about grade three, I think, that, that yeah, three roughly. course. Whereas uh, A224 will go much, much higher than grade five yeah. um, ABRSM. Yeah, okay. so something that's not a module gets you up to rather before the same yeah. tour level. Something that is a module gets you up considerably yeah. further is, is really the, the message. Fantastic, okay, thank you. Okay. Damon. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of interest, even from people who, who aren't studying music. Um, so I don't, about the, the different cultures that mm. you were saying about the, the nature of contemporary music on the, the module, yeah. because I, I think there was a lot of, lot of thought that it was more about classical music rather than contemporary and non-Western. Um, so there's a lot of excitement about that. Um, and also, uh, Mary saying that she spent 18 years with the uh, Oxford Bach Choir. Ah. Uh, so, lots of practical aspects about uh, yeah. about what people are doing mm. as well. Yeah. And doing that with three children at the same yeah. time. Yeah. So wow. Wow. Impressive. <laughs> Excellent. So, let's think about some of the sorts of things then, because we've got some examples um, yeah. from, from the module. Um, so, what do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about some of the ways that students use sound, or shall we give them an example? Um, well, should we give them an example first? Yes, so, you know, I always believe if you talk about music, you have to listen to something. Okay. So, you know. <laughs> so we've got we've got something that we're going to play um, that you can listen to, and then you can tell us what you think it is. So on the um, screen, you'll see uh, the widget "What is this sound?" and you can collect select sorry one of the items: footsteps in the snow, a dog eating a carrot, or a nearly complete TMA. Uh, so let's play the sound for you. Right, so let's see um, what you have to say about that. If you haven't voted already, do click on the um, item that you think the answer is. What is this sound? Is it footsteps in the snow, a dog eating a carrot, or a nearly complete TMA? So is this the sort of thing that's in the module before we get the answer? Uh, yes, it is. In fact, that, that recording is something that is in the module, and I'll talk about it in a moment. It was recorded on something a bit like this. Right. This is a portable stereo digital recorder. Um, and this is one of the one of the pieces of kit that um, you need in order to study the module. We don't ask you to buy any set books for this module, but we do ask you to get yourself one of these. They're not particularly expensive. There's a list of suitable models and so on you, you get beforehand. But the important thing is that you can take digital stereo recordings with this. And in fact, that's what was used for recording that uh, that sound. And you make recordings yourself. One of the first things you do is you get it out of the box, you make a recording, and you play it back, and then you ask yourself, how could this be a bit better? What, uh, what was wrong with it? Is there background noise? Is it not quite what I expected? And you go from there, to, to, uh, and, and throughout the module, you learn a bit of the technique of how to make recordings, and also things you can do with them once you've made them. Which is, uh, uh, which is, which we'll is bring nice them on thing. here and play them and see what everyone says. You well, can indeed. Let's That's see right. what people said at home. So, uh, uh, everyone got it right. Sorry, I've spoiled the answer now. <laughs> 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 and I sounded really disappointed. And the, o the only reason is because I've tried and my dog won't eat carrots. <laughs> well, my or strawberries. My colleague, uh, Sean, who made that recording, said he didn't know that dogs ate carrots until he found his dog eating one. And so, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so he got the recorder out and, and made a recording of it. But it's not just, uh, you know, because it's an interesting thing. It's, a, it's an unusual thing to happen. The point is, once you've got a recording of any any sort, and that's that's a kind of you know, just a, it's a bit of sound. Once you've got a bit of sound, you can load it into your computer um, and you can look at it. Now we've got two pieces of software as part of this module. One of which, um, which is called Sonic Visualizer, is for looking at sounds and analysing their kind of um, sonic capabilities. And the other is called Reaper, and that is like a um, recording studio inside your computer. It enables you to manipulate the sound and change it. 
And once you've uh, made a recording, which could be a dog eating a carrot or indeed anything else, you can snip out a little bit Other of it. Other people have changed their minds, apparently. Oh, right. Okay. <laughs> you can snip out a little bit of it and then do things with it. In fact, yesterday, uh, because I was coming on here, I took a little bit out of the middle of that recording and I started playing with it and make, to, to do things. Now, on the screen, you can see uh, one of the um, programs that you get to use. Um, this is part of the module materials. This one's called Sonic Visualizer. And at the top, you can see there's a sound wave, a piece of sound. In fact, that's not the dog eating the carrot. That's a Beethoven symphony. We have a tradition of always starting our modules with a Beethoven symphony if we <laughs> and can. And why not? And why not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then underneath there are two very powerful ways of analysing it um, using that, uh, that programme. Um, but the, the other one, uh, which I think we've got a screenshot of the, uh, the other one as well. Yes, that, this is Reaper, and that is the dog eating a carrot going along, along the top. And you can see it's on two channels, and you can manipulate them to make it change a bit. Um, and I think we've got the, um, the sandwich I, I did yesterday, uh, which is a little bit of a dog eating a carrot, but kind of jazzed up a little bit. OK, so let's, let's take a listen to how that sounded when you manipulated it. Not traditional jazz. <laughs> Not uh, that. But once you start doing that, because there's a bit of it was going round and round in a loop and uh, then going against itself in the loop, you start getting a bit of rhythm to it. Mm -hmm. And it, it becomes, it's not a piece of music yet, but it's the sort of thing you could start turning into a piece of music. It reminds me of um, Steve Reich's kind of piano phase music, where you take to the same track essentially and play it slightly out of phase with each other and eventually it locks back in and creates a really hypnotic effect. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And in fact, the, the acoustic phenomenon of phase and phase relationships in sound waves is the, is the kind of topic of that little bit of the, of the module. You get to look at acoustics, you get to look at performance, you get to look at practicalities of recording. And um, we're very excited about it. And we hope uh, people, whether they're intending to follow a music degree or whether they want to do a little bit of music within their open degree, uh, we'll, we'll take a look at the new module. Brilliant. Now, we must talk about the relationship with, uh, with Trinity Laban because this mm. is such a unique thing. And um, one thing I particularly love about it is that you don't have to be amazing. You don't have to be, you know, you can be a singer, for example. Absolutely. Um, or, or not a very good singer <laughs> to go there. But, but the whole idea is to get an experience as a performer. Um, and I think that's a wonderful, you know, aspect of this qualification. It is. I mean, and it's part of um, music um, education that we haven't up till now been really been able to offer. Um, and all we require is that students are, are playing with at least one other person, that they're able to reflect on their own performance. Um, and the, 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 in fact, one of the, the, the best things about the, the Trinity course is that it offers a chance for students to come together for a week long residential and make music together, which is, is absolutely essential, I think, to, to understanding how, how music works. And of course, they also have access to the, the um, a kind of conservatoire level of, of um, interaction with, with um, which must be an amazing experience. Indeed, and, and yet they don't have to audition either. I yeah. think some, some students are, are worried that they may have to audition for the course, but it's totally non-auditioning. Yeah. In fact, um, some students I know have um, taken up making music with other people in order to yeah. follow the, uh, the wow. module. And that's per perfectly OK. You, um, it, it might be something you've never done previously, but um, um, absolutely, you, you can join a choir or you can... Uh, form, you a band with your dog. form a band, <laughs> form a band with your dog. Form a band with your dog. Well, one of the things you do, one of the very first things you do is you interview the other people you make music with. And you also um, you write, uh, write a bit about what, what makes you, motivates you to make music with with other people so if it was a dog you'd have, you'd have difficulty getting the the uh, interview data I think but uh, yeah it's, it's completely open as to you know, as to the genre you mm. play or the standard of uh, performance when you come into it and uh, it's all about looking at what you do why you love it and why other people should listen to you um, so uh, that, that's uh, that, that you know, it's again it's very practical it, it's uh, it's about what makes people love music as a subject and, and looking at that rigorously, but looking at it from that lens of a, of, a, of a practitioner who loves what they do. That sounds absolutely brilliant. So uh, students can find out more how. We've got some PDFs on the Student Hub Live website. Yeah, there's, that. There's, there's a PDF which essentially um, outlines the, the structure of the degree. Um, but of course, I mean, the, the usual websites will, will have all that information as, as well.
Brilliant. So you can go to study at the OU and find out more about the um, qualifications, etc. And also the qualification websites are a great place to look as well. Mm, definitely. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for filling us in on that degree. And, and I know that so many students have been looking forward to that. Um, I'm off now to form my band, The Dog and the Carrots. <laughs> so <laughs> wish me luck. We'll sign you up. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we've got another video to play you before our next session. So the video we're going to play is Exploring Religion because we'll be joined um, by Suzanne Newcomb to talk about religious studies uh, in a few minutes. So join us for that next session shortly. See you then. <laughs>